Uh, I think, Ciarán uh, Corla, we, we mustn't just condemn racism, although of course we must, but we must fight against it. And that's why, certainly for our part in People Before Profit, we declare absolute solidarity with the Black Lives Matter and with the wave of protest across the world that has taken place in the aftermath of the horrific killing of uh, George Floyd and the rightful recognition by vast numbers of people across America and across the world that that wasn't an isolated incident but was uh, the deadly brutal consequence of systemic racism, widespread racism across America and across, uh, across the world. Um, but of course when you say that, uh, for those who spend any time on social media, you'll know that very quickly there will be a torrent of abuse uh, directed at you who will say, uh, why are you going on about what's Black Lives Matter and what's going on in America? What's that got to do with us? Surely all lives matter. Uh, and of course what that sentiment fails to recognise, deliberately sometimes, is it is precisely because all lives matter that we must declare solidarity with the movement that says black lives matter. Because the death of George Floyd could only happen in a society where some people believe that the lives of black people and people of colour do not matter. Uh, that they are somehow lesser, that they are dehumanised and therefore it is acceptable to treat them as less than human. Uh, and that is the essence uh, of uh, racism, uh, a system uh, perpetuated by the likes of Donald Trump who deliberately and cynically use it uh, to try and deflect away from his own failings on so many levels uh, to turn people against one another by dehumanising black people and uh, people of uh, colour. Uh, but as has been said, uh, if Trump is the most uh, visible and uh, blunt exponent of racism uh, among leaders in the world today, it is not something that is alien uh, to this uh, country. And if people have already mentioned Article 27, which denies equality and citizenship to uh, children born, to some children born in this country, the anti-traveller racism, which is the shame uh, of this state, uh, which you know, we see very possibly uh, the horrific consequences of uh, in the allegation that is made uh, and seems very credible from the eight victims of James O'Reilly, uh, who suffered the most uh, terrible abuse, that, that their uh, ethnic origin as travellers uh, led to a poor response by the state in dealing with the horrific abuse uh, that they uh, suffered. Uh, it's seen in the fact that in the aftermath of the crash of 2008 that the traveller accommodation programme was cut from 70 million euro a year uh, to 4 million in 2015 and that somehow that was deemed accessible. That 13 percent of female travellers uh, finish school as, as distinct from 70% of settled females uh, and that travellers are six times more likely uh, uh, to uh, die from suicide than people from the settled, uh, uh, settled community or of course the horrific system of direct provision uh, which segregates uh, asylum seekers and refugees uh, in inhumane and degrading uh, conditions that no person would accept for their own family or loved ones uh, but which we seem to think are okay uh, to inflict uh, on people mostly of colour coming to this country uh, looking, for, uh, looking for refuge. And I would just say that uh, to those who, who say we shouldn't raise these issues, uh, that in fact, uh, or that somehow this isn't our business, the, the business of the Irish people to worry about these things, that that sentiment is a betrayal of uh, the Irish revolutionary and radical tradition, which has always understood the need to stand with the oppressed and exploited uh, wherever they are uh, across the world. I think uh, particularly of Damien Dempsey's song, Choctaw Nation, where he reminds people 
uh, that the Choctaw Nation of Native Americans, who suffered at the hands uh, of slavers and uh, frontiers men, often Irish men, uh, the, the, rather than respond by saying, we don't care about the plight of the Irish, when the Irish were suffering famine conditions in the 1840s, sent money and aid and solidarity uh, to the famine victims here in Ireland. That sort of internationalism, that sort of solidarity, standing with the oppressed, standing against racism, is actually the duty and responsibility of people across the world, but very particularly people in this country, given our history.